we have our sends. So the problem with this, if you're adding reverb, delay, and all these really cool things, it gradually starts using up your processing power. So a good idea to do is to create a bus. What that is essentially is a track where you put all your effects on one track. So if you have a delay and a really cool you know, reverb, you can make a specific track for each one of those things. And then what you're telling Adobe Audition to do is say, hey, I want my voice in this recording to have a little bit of reverb. So you would send a little bit of that signal to that reverb so you're, you can kind of mix it to taste. Hey, I want a little bit more, a little bit less, a little bit more, and you can fine tune exactly what you want to apply to that thing. Besides that is an EQ. Each track has its own individual EQ built into it. You can toggle that on, and then by double clicking, it'll open the EQ. And with this, you can fine tune your sound even further. So say we record and I bump into the microphone, boom, and I get that noise by accident. I can roll off some of that noise and attenuate, meaning I lower it down, I don't get rid of it completely, but I can reduce it substantially by EQing it. I can roll off some of the high end. So an EQ, just a brief overview of EQ, you have something called a high pass which means all the frequencies on the low end are being removed and all the high frequencies are going to be allowed in. So if I press play, and let me uh, go to like the beginning of this. French morgue attendant whose morbid obsession. So it got rid of all the low end of that. And then the opposite is a low pass. What is low pass? It allows all the low frequencies to pass through and all the high frequencies are going to be cut off. So let me just fast forward to a different part of the interview. Writing the book. Tell us about where you were born. So now you can hear that the high frequencies have been removed. So you can also use what I like most in podcast editing is reductive editing. So I don't like adding a lot of noise to the performance. I like removing troublesome frequencies. So what I'll do as you see, as I move this around, these numbers are changing. So the top one here is your frequencies. So that's... And tell us about your parents and your early family life and what it was characterized by. You can kind of hear as I pan around. I was born uh, in the 70s. So all your low end, the bassy noises are going to be to the left. And all the higher frequencies, your sharp S's and stuff will be to the right. You can also make something sound brighter or what they call adding air to a performance by boosting up some frequencies on the higher end here. So I like reducing noises. So what I'll do is I'll exaggerate the noise by increasing the gain, which is this number, the second number down. Seven to two. And finding the frequency that's troublesome. In Cameroon, yeah. And then to narrow it down even further, you can adjust what they call the Q, which is the width of a frequency. So most EQs, whether in uh, this kind of setup, will have, uh, when, when you can see all these little bands, will have an option like this. They'll have a gain, a frequency, and usually a Q. And you can fine tune My father, uh, a specific frequency. A lot. And when you find the troublesome frequency, you can then reduce the gain, either super exaggerated, what I like doing is just, if you're mixing for music, for instance, uh, a gain reduction of maybe six decibels max. Job. It's all accumulative. So any changes I make here will affect the overall sound down the line here. Uh, whether it's a song or editing audio for film, I like reductive editing. But you can boost frequencies, don't get me wrong, I do that as well. So for this example that I have, his voice had a lot more low end, not enough high end. So rather than trying to boost the high end to match the interviewer's voice, um, who did not have a lot of low end, I ended up just removing some low end to make his sound lighter. So that was reductive editing. So be, let me find an example here. The crimes and trial of the vampire of Paris. So instead of trying to make his, that, that's the interviewer's voice. 19. What I ended up doing was removing 19, some low end. 19, so I used the high pass filter. In Cameroon, in Africa. My father, uh, in 19. Rolled off some of the low end and then boosted some of the high. 72. In Cameroon. Now boosting high frequencies also bring in their own problem. 
what you'll encounter is a lot of S's or sibilance. So all, this, all the S's and T's, those get really sharp and harsh to hear. So what you'll do is EQ out some of that frequency and then use something called a de-esser. And those address frequencies that are problematic and can cause distortion down the line. But I don't want to get too bogged down in EQ because that's not the main focus of this right here. Next up in our bar here is a metronome. So this is primarily used if you're recording music and you need to keep tempo. So I'll mute these for a second because we don't need to focus on these. I'll just press play. So a metronome is used to keep tempo. So the faster I move it, the faster the metronome moves, and more to the right. The smaller the number, the slower the tempo, the slower the metronome is going to go. So this is helpful if you're playing guitar, playing drums, and need to keep a, in sync or keep pace with a specific tempo. Moving right along is this icon that looks like a little stopwatch. This allows you to time stretch something. What this particular thing does is speed up or slow down the audio. And you'll see when I toggle it on and off, those two little white triangles appear in the corners. That indicates this is active. So if I drag it to the right, it's gonna slow it down. Hello, welcome to the central. It sounds like the sloth from uh, Zootopia. <laughs> so you can do the opposite of this though. You can actually speed stuff up. So you'll often hear this in commercials when they're talking about side effects of stuff. Hello, welcome to this introduction to editing audio in Adobe Audition. If this was a podcast and I want to remove sound, you'll hear these all the time. Side effects may include blah, 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 blah. It goes really fast. So let's do something like this. We'll go speed up the audio to cut down on time. So for podcasting, what I've used this actually for is editing phrasings that are elongated. Was, uh... It was a... Uh... So that added to the overall time of this. You notice the time difference in the original, the duration, and then the edited version, or a little less. I could have went more extreme, but I didn't choose to in this instance, where they elongate phrases. And I was going to the store and we bought some chips and got a soda. So you would select those phrases and shorten them so they sound more natural. And we bought a soda. You know, you can speed it up like that. So that's how I would use it personally. And just like how we had in the other window, there's this option to toggle snapping. So what I would use snapping for in this mix uh, multi-track window is if I'm editing audio, let's just say this was empty. If I didn't have this toggled on and I was trying to move my audio and align it, it's kind of hard to do. You'll actually notice that this little cross bar forms here. What Audition does is automatically tries to crossfade your audio so there's a smooth tra transition here. So let me just give a better example here. I'm going to eliminate some of this stuff here. I'm trying to blend these together and this is oh. how I would do it. It blended those two together, but that's not what I was trying to do. What I wanted to do is move this at the very end, but I'm having a hard time to. So what they did was add this little magnet tool. It's a snapping tool. So now if I move close to the end, it'll snap to the nearest grid mark here so I can actually snap this in place and get real accurate. So this is super helpful in time saving. So you can add markers along the way, keeping note of things you want to change. So that's the first thing I would do is take a pass by playing it and pressing M to editing audio in Adobe Audition. If this was a podcast, so you can add markers to it and leave yourself notations. And to my left on the bottom here, you'll see a, a markers tab. If that's not there, you can always find it under windows and then choose markers and it will show up. Sometimes it's attached, sometimes it's detached like this. If I, un, uh, if I detach the panel, sometimes it'll be loose like this. That's fine. You can click once on the name and hold it. And if I hover over an area, I can actually choose where I want to put this. So I can add that into my little tabs here. So you can really customize the overall workflow and layout of your particular program uh, or your session. But I would use markers to indicate what these are. So I can double click on the, the section here and call this like, you know, noise or cough or whatever it may be. So I know while I'm going to edit, that's something I want to address later on. So the difference between a multi-track view and a waveform view is destructive and non-destructive editing. So if I make a slice here, 
and I delete it and I I'm, I made a mistake. I want to bring it back. That's not a problem. I can hover over the edge and you'll see this little bracket tool form. I can bring back the audio that was just deleted. It's not gone. It's just hidden away. That's what that does. Same thing here. I can bring back the audio. I can bring back the audio. So this is the full length of the audio currently. And I'll show you what happens if I make that same decision in a waveform view. So I'll double click what I'm working on currently, which is our demo. Now, if I were to delete audio in this, I delete this whole beginning section. If this was a podcast and I only keep this section here, I delete the rest of it. What happens is now that change has been affected in the multi-track view. So all that audio is gone now. And you also get this little warning sign here. Say, hey, something's changed in the waveform view. So I understand that changes have been made. I can dismiss this warning. I can't bring it back. I can't, there's no dragging this out because this is just a placeholder for the waveform view. So this is like the parent file and this is like the, the child file. This is uh, the main file to edit would be in this window. So I'd have to undo the changes here first. And if I go back to multi-track, now you'll see the changes have been brought back and it again warns me, hey, something's changed. I can dismiss that warning if I want to. So that's what I mean by destructive and non-destructive editing. Things I do in this window, in the multi-track, I can bring back in the waveform window. When I make that change, it's permanent. It applies it to everything. So keep that in mind when you're editing your podcast.